Imagine a prison unlike any you've ever seen. A circular building with cells lining the outer ring. In the center stands a tall watchtower, its windows dark and unreadable. The prisoners can never be quite sure if anyone is watching them at any given moment, but the possibility, the constant potential for observation, hangs heavily in the air. Are you picturing it? This unsettling architectural design has a name, the Panopticon. And as unsettling as it is, the true power of the Panopticon isn't about chains and barred windows. It's about what it does to the mind. The Panopticon was the brainchild of 18th century philosopher Jeremy Bentham, but it was the 20th century French thinker Michel Foucault who saw in it a chilling metaphor for how power operates in modern society. Foucault, a historian obsessed with the subtle workings of control, saw far beyond prison walls. He argued that systems remarkably like the Panopticon permeate our lives, shaping us from the inside out. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into Foucault's Panopticon, exploring the ways that invisible observation influences our actions, thoughts, and even our deepest sense of self. Let's return to our imaginary prison. The brilliance and the horror of the Panopticon design lies in its efficiency. A single guard in the central tower could potentially observe any prisoner at any moment, but the prisoners can never know for sure if they're being watched. This uncertainty is the key, because whether the guard is actually there or not becomes irrelevant. The prisoners, aware of the possibility of constant surveillance, start to adjust their behavior. They become their own jailers, ensuring they always appear to be following the rules. This is where the Panopticon becomes more than a building and transforms into a profound metaphor. Foucault argued that the most effective power isn't achieved through violence or brute force, but through this type of psychological control. When people believe they could be scrutinized at any time, they internalize that watchful gaze. Self-discipline becomes a survival tactic. The true genius of the Panopticon isn't in the constant surveillance itself. It's in its potential. The watchtower might be empty, but the prisoners behave as if it never is. The power has shifted, moving outwards from the central authority and taking root inside the minds of the individuals. This, for Foucault, is the essence of how modern systems of control often operate. We become both the prisoners and the guards of our own lives, ever vigilant against stepping outside of what's deemed acceptable. Now you may be thinking, this sounds bleak, but prisons are a specific circumstance and you'd be right. But Foucault's chilling insight was that the panopticon metaphor extends far beyond literal places of confinement. Think about the structures that shape our lives, schools, hospitals, workplaces. While not designed exactly like prisons, many carry echoes of panopticon-like dynamics. Think back to your school days. Remember the way classrooms were arranged, desks facing the front, the teacher's podium positioned for maximum visibility, or the way exams were proctored, a single authority figure walking amongst the rows, their gaze scrutinizing your every move. Schools are, by design, places of observation and assessment. While essential for learning, they also habituate us from a young age to an expectation of being watched and judged. Or take the modern hospital. Patients wear standardized gowns, their bodies are subject to examinations, their medical histories recorded in detail. While crucial for providing care, these procedures also highlight a power dynamic. It's the doctors and nurses who hold the knowledge and exert a level of control over the vulnerable patient. Even in our workplaces, the panopticon subtly hums along. Think of performance reviews, productivity tracking software, or even the carefully arranged open office plan that allows for casual monitoring of employees. Our output, our efficiency, all fall under potential scrutiny. This isn't to say that all workplaces are sinister, but the subtle expectation of visibility is designed to shape our behavior, nudging us to conform to expectations. What Foucault is revealing is a fundamental shift in how power operates. We've moved away from the era of the dungeon, of overt displays of violent punishment. Instead, control in modern society is often far more subtle. Woven into seemingly normal institutions and practices that shape our behavior, through a deeply internalized sense of being observed. But it goes even deeper. What exactly are we being observed for? What are the standards we're subconsciously trying to meet with our self-disciplined behavior? 
This is where we need to pull our focus back to Foucault's broader ideas about power, knowledge, and what he termed discourse. It's not just the overt rules and regulations of these institutions that create that panopticon feeling. It's also the pressure to conform to social norms and expectations. Think about the relentless messages we receive, both overtly and subtly, about how we should look, what we should achieve, and how we should behave. The fashion magazines we glance at, the curated lives we see on social media, the performance reviews at work, all of these contribute to creating a template for how we should be. We internalize these norms so deeply that we start policing ourselves. We worry about whether our clothes are stylish enough, whether our social media posts are getting enough likes, whether we're working efficiently enough for that unseen supervisor who may or may not be tracking our computer usage. It's as if we carry a little watchtower around in our own minds, constantly judging ourselves against these societal standards. This internalized panopticon is where Foucault's ideas become truly unsettling. The potential for outside judgment is so pervasive in our modern world that it transforms into a system of self-regulation. We become both prisoner and guard within our own lives. The desire for social acceptance, for fitting in, becomes a powerful controlling force, often stronger than any external threat of punishment. Take the obsession with body image as an example. While diet and fitness can be about health, for many, it becomes an act of conformity. Advertisements, influencer posts, and casual comments from peers all shape our perception of the ideal body. The fear of being perceived as unattractive or unhealthy can lead to intense self-scrutiny. We monitor our food intake, obsess over workouts, and harshly judge ourselves in the mirror, internalizing the gaze of a society obsessed with outward appearances. The panopticon metaphor raises profound questions about the price we pay for social order. Does this internalized surveillance make us better people, or does it stifle our individuality and breed insecurity? How does this dynamic play out in a world increasingly dominated by technology, where our every online move could be a potential data point, ready to be analyzed and used to shape our experiences? You might be thinking, so what if we internalize social norms? Isn't it a good thing to be disciplined, to strive for self-improvement? Doesn't a well-ordered society require a certain degree of conformity? And these are absolutely valid questions. It's undeniable that social norms can provide a sense of stability, predictability, and a shared moral framework. The panopticon can even produce positive results. Exam proctors ensure students don't cheat. Workplace performance tracking can improve productivity. But lurking within these seemingly benign structures is the potential for a chilling trade-off. Let's talk about social media. On the surface, platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok are about connection, sharing our lives with others. But what impact does it have on our behavior when we know or suspect that our every post, our every like, is potentially being viewed, judged, and recorded? We start curating an image, projecting a version of ourselves that we think conforms to what will garner approval. Authenticity can get lost in the pursuit of a virtual audience's acceptance. Or consider productivity tracking software, now increasingly common in remote workplaces. While it can help identify inefficiencies, it also creates a persistent sense of being watched. Do employees work harder knowing their every click and keystroke could be monitored? Possibly. But does it also create anxiety, a fear of slipping up, a pressure to be constantly visibly doing? Quite possibly. This is the crux of the panopticon dilemma. Do the benefits of a more efficient, orderly society outweigh the potential costs to individual freedom, mental well-being, and a genuine sense of autonomy? When we lose sight of how these subtle systems of control operate, we risk becoming unwitting prisoners of our own making. But does that mean we're helpless, perpetually trapped within unseen panopticons, both societal and of our own creation. Foucault's philosophy wasn't about despair, but about revealing the mechanisms of power so that we might regain a degree of agency. The image of the panopticon is a powerful one, and it's easy to feel disheartened when confronted with the subtle, pervasive ways our behavior is shaped. But like with any tool of power, awareness is the first step towards resistance. Can we ever fully escape these dynamics? Perhaps not completely. Modern life is built upon overlapping systems of observation and social expectations. 
But that doesn't mean we have to surrender our inner lives entirely. Consider where the panopticon metaphor breaks down. The power of Bentham's prison relies on uncertainty. Prisoners never know for sure if they're being watched. But we, in our everyday lives, do have access to more information. We can choose to educate ourselves about how social media platforms use our data, how workplace surveillance software functions, how the beauty and fitness industries create profit from our insecurities. Knowledge breaks down the illusion of the unseen, ever-present watcher. It reveals that these systems, while powerful, are not omnipotent. There are cracks, blind spots, and places where individual agency can be reclaimed. Furthermore, Foucault emphasized the role of discourse in creating and maintaining power. By questioning dominant narratives about what success looks like, what bodies are desirable, what behaviors are acceptable, we begin to chip away at the foundations upon which our internal watchtowers are built. This resistance may be small-scale and individual at first. It might involve consciously choosing to disengage from certain social media platforms, setting boundaries with work monitoring, or seeking out alternative communities that celebrate diverse ways of being. However, the act of questioning and pushing back even in seemingly insignificant ways disrupts the seamless operation of panopticon-like dynamics. Foucault's panopticon serves as a potent reminder of the ways in which power subtly shapes us from within. It encourages us to question the unspoken rules that govern our lives and to become more conscious of how our desire for acceptance and fear of judgment can be used as tools of control. Before we end, I want to leave you with some questions for reflection. Where in your life do you most keenly feel the presence of a real or metaphorical watchtower? Are there ways in which this sense of being observed benefits you? Are there ways it might limit you? What might a small act of resistance against the panopticon look like for you? The panopticon may be a powerful metaphor, but it doesn't have to be our inescapable reality. By questioning, resisting, and consciously choosing where to place our attention, we reclaim some of the power that we so easily surrender to unseen forces. If you found these ideas thought-provoking, please share this episode with others and start a conversation about the subtle and not-so-subtle ways we are shaped by the world around us.